Hello and welcome to Celtic Knitted Designs. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to do a super chunky, quick and easy tea cosy. It's got optional details of a nice crochet chain, a pom-pom and some nice ribbon detail at the bottom. All you need to do in order to be able to knit up this tea cosy is a knit stitch, a purl stitch and a simple decrease. But I'm going to take you through that step by step. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Um, we produce videos on knitting tutorials and specific knitting techniques so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you can get a notification every time we post a new video. Now on with the tea cosy. In order to knit the tea cosy you will need size 7 millimeter knitting needles. I'm using Knit Pro Zing knitting needles today. You will also need the main colour of yarn. I'm using Stylecraft Life Super Chunky in this cool like oceany, bluey, greeny colour. You can also use an optional contrasting yarn. You can see I'm using a bit of my stash bust in here. So this is Stylecraft Life Chunky in a nice off-white colour. You'll also need a crochet hook. I'm using a Haya 8mm crochet hook. Um, this is optional so you don't actually need to do the crochet chain if you don't feel comfortable with it but I will take you through that step by step. Also optional is a pom pom maker. I'm using Knit Pro pom pom maker in size 35 millimeter diameter. This is for decorating the tea cosy so it is optional but I will take you through how to use this to make a super cute pom pom. You also need some scissors and a darning needle because we are going to do a little bit of sewing up but I promise it's absolutely minimal. Okay, so to begin, we're going to cast on using the long tail method. So we need to get a bit of a tail from our main colour of yarn. Um, once you finish casting on, so we're going to cast on 23 stitches, you need about a 6 inch tail left for joining up at the end. So in order to start, we're going to make our slip knot. So we'll get my two fingers of my right hand, hang the yarn over, twist it over and cross it over the top of my index finger turn my fingers to face me. We've got this rear strand is going to go underneath the front strand while pulling that strand up and then pull that back strand through and that's our slip knot. Now to see casting on long tail method in more detail, check out the video that's just on that. So there's our first stitch now on the right hand needle and we are going to continue with the long tail method until we've got 23 stitches. Twenty-two and twenty-three. So now we've cast on the twenty-three stitches. We're leaving a tail for sewing on, um, and then we are going to take those cast-on stitches into our left hand. Take up the right needle, and what we're going to do with our first row is knit one stitch, then purl one stitch, and continue like that to the last stitch where we're going to knit one. So we're going to go in the bottom. Wrap the ball end of the yarn around the back of the needle, into the middle, and slide the left needle up, over, and slide the stitch off. So that's our first knit stitch. Now if you need to see the knit stitch in some more detail, check out Celtic Knitted Designs video that is just on knit stitch. Now what we're going to do is purl. So we're going to bring the ball end of the yarn to the front, like so. So the working yarn's now facing forward. And our right needle is going to go into the front of the next stitch on the left needle, like this. We're then going to wrap the yarn round in between those two needles, bring it to the front, and we're going to take that right needle down to the back and slide the left needle out. And that's a purl stitch. Now again, to see that in more detail, check out our video that is just on the purl stitch. And we are going to continue repeating that pattern. So we're going to put the working yarn to the back and we're going to knit the stitch. Working yarn to the front. We're going to purl the next stitch. And this is going to form one by one ribbing or one by one rib stitch, which will be the base of the tea cozy. So it will grip the teapot quite nicely. So I'm just going to continue in one by one ribbon 
till we meet till we get to the end and on the last stitch as I said we are just going to knit that one okay so now we are at the last stitch on the left needle I'm just going to knit that and that's us done row one now we're going to switch the needles over and we're now going to work row two, which is our second row of one by one ribbon. And we are going to start with a purl stitch. Now, how do I know that I'm going to do a purl stitch? It's because if you look at the needle really carefully, you can see that there's a little bubble here, which is our purl. And when it goes straight down to form a V, it's our knit stitch. So if you get confused as to which row you're on, this is the wrong side row because it starts with the purl, so it'll be the, form the inside of the tea cosy. So we're going to go into the back of that and purl it, and then knit, and just continue with row two of the tea cosy. And now we're getting to the end of the row. We are going to purl the last stitch and then turn it around and you can see we're getting that nice rib design because we're using super chunky yarn it's going to knit up really quickly and we can see the nice detail of it so now we're on to row three and we're basically going to repeat row one so we are going to knit one purl one all the way to the last stitch where we're going to knit for our third row of one by one rib almost to the end and knit that last stitch and turn it around. And that's because we've got an odd number of stitches cast on for the size of the teapot that we want this to fit. And now we're on row four and we're going to repeat our second row of ribbing. So we start with our purl stitch, then our knit, and continue to the end of this row where we're going to purl the last stitch. So that was the end of row four and now we're going to start row five. Now if you'd prefer to follow this as a written pattern, the link to the pattern is available below. Now we're at the end of row five, we're going to knit that last stitch and then switch over again. Now we're on row six. This is our last row of one by one rib, which you may be pleased to hear. And again, we're going to repeat row two. So starting with a purl, knit, continue to last stitch and then purl it. And last stitch, purl it and then we're back to the front and this is row seven. So we're now going to go to change our stitch pattern to stockinette stitch or stocking stitch. And this is what you typically refer to as a knitting kind of pattern. Um, it goes really quickly. So what we're going to do first is for row seven, we are going to knit every stitch. So we just go in and knit, knit right the way along. There we go, our first row of stocking stitch, switch over, and we're now gonna purl every stitch. And you can see on the back, we've got all these little bubbles. So that means you're gonna purl this row. So if you ever get lost as to which row you're on, you know it's a purl row because of these little bubbles facing you. So this is now row eight, our purl row. And there we go. And now we're on to row nine, which is back to knit row again. So if you see the difference here, we've got these little, like almost like arrows or Vs. So that's our knit row, that's our purl row. And that's stocking stitch. So we're gonna knit every stitch. Now we're at the end of row nine, our knit row. Switch round for row 10, our purl. 
and we're going to continue alternating purl stitch and knit stitch making up our stocking stitch until we get to row 16. Okay now we're on row 16 and we're going to purl all the way across. Now we're on to row 17, which is our first decrease row. So we're going to do the most, the easiest of all decreases, which is a knit two together. So as long as you can knit, you can definitely do this decrease. Now you can see there we've got our rib brim down the bottom. We've then got our nice stocking stitch or stockinette stitch. And you might be wondering, wow, I'm using super chunky yarn, but only size seven needles. And it's because I wanted this really close knit, really thick, um, so that it keeps my tea warmer for longer. Um, because I love tea, but I often don't drink it quick enough. So that's the reason behind this method. Okay, so starting with our decrease, I'll talk you through this step by step. So what we're going to start with is knitting four stitches. So one, two, three, four, Got four stitches on the right needle. And now we're gonna do our first decrease. So we are gonna knit the next two stitches on the left needle together. So to do that, I'm gonna take the right needle and the tip of it, and I'm gonna put it into this second stitch on the left needle. So it's gonna come in the front, pick up that first stitch and up the back. I'll show you that again. So I'm gonna, pick up the right needle into that second stitch, into the bottom, pick up the first stitch and cross them over. And then you're just gonna knit it like it's a normal stitch. So round the back, cross the middle, slide the right needle down, up and off. So there you have it. We have knitted two stitches together. Don't worry about this big loop, it'll sort itself out in the next row. And that is how to decrease knitting two together. So it's starting to form the top of the tea cozy. So now what we're gonna do is knit another four stitches. And we are gonna knit the next two stitches together again. So into that second stitch, pick up the first one, cross them over, knit like normal. And that was our second decrease. We're going to knit another four. And we are going to decrease again. So these two stitches, we're going to knit them together. So into that second stitch, cross over the back of the yarn round and knit them off. There we go. And with the last four stitches, oh, sorry. Look, and with the last five stitches on the left needle, we are just going to knit all five. And that's just so we've got a nice shape to our decrease. So there we have it. We've just decreased three stitches off our needles by doing our nice knit two together. So we should now have 20 stitches on the needle. Let's just double check. 20, perfect. So we're gonna take the work into our left hand and we are now going to purl right the way to the end. So this will keep our stockinette pattern for this main body of the tea cozy. Once you get to one of these decreases, you can see that you've got a bigger bubble at the back. That's those two stitches knitted together and you just purl it like normal. Here's another decrease. There we go. Okay, 
so that was row 18, we're now on row 19. So for this one we're going to decrease again, so this time we're going to knit 3 and then knit 2 together. And we'll start to see a nice shape form into our decrease. So three stitches on the right, the next two, we can see that first decrease there. And we're now going to join these two um, by decreasing. So into that second stitch, pick up the first, round the back, knit them off. There we go. Knit another three. And now we're going to knit two together again. Knit another three. Knit two together to decrease. Now we've got two five stitches left on the left needle. We're just going to knit all five. There we go. And that was row 19. And now we're on row 20, we're just going to purl right across to the end. Okay, now we are on row 21, which is another decrease row, and we're going to knit two stitches and then knit two together. And then two together. Two. Then two together. One, two, two together, one, two, two together, and now with the last stitch, we're going to knit. There we go. And that was our last decrease row. And we've now got 13 stitches on the needle. And what we're going to do now is to do the top of the tea cosy, we're going to repeat our one by one rib. So for row 22, we're going to start with a purl stitch, one purl, and then knit one, one knit. And we're going to work in one by one rib across the row. We started with the purl because we've got the wrong side, the pearl side, facing us. Okay, that was the end of row 22. Now row 23, we're going to do our right side row of ribbing. So we're going to start with a knit stitch and then purl. I'm going to knit and purl to the end. Now for the row 24, we are going to repeat row 22. So another one by one rib, starting with a purl stitch. Then row 25 is our leading off with the knit, another row of one by one rib. There we go. And row 26, you might be glad to hear is our last row of one by one rib, starting with our purl stitch. Okay, there we go. So now the last thing we're gonna do is cast off. And we are gonna cast off uh, in rib. So we are gonna start off by knitting the first stitch, and then purl in the second, so it's in pattern. We're then going to keep the yarn to the front. We're going to take the left needle, pick up that first stitch, pass it over the second stitch, like so, and then pull it off. And that's our first cast off. Then yarn to the back, We're going to knit this stitch, keep the yarn to the back, pick up that first stitch on the left needle, right needle, pick it up over and off and just continue. So yarn to the front, rib, uh, purl, pick up that stitch, pass it over, yarn to the back, knit, pick up, pass over, yarn to the front, purl, pick up, pass over, yarn to the back, knit, 
pick up, pass over, yarn to the front purl, and just continue like that until your last stitch. And now we're at the last stitch on the left needle, last stitch on the right. We've got the yarn to the back, we're going to knit that last stitch and pass this stitch up, over and off. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to get our scissors and we're going to cut about a six inch tail. And da -da. Then get your darning needle. Um, I've got one with quite a big eye because it makes this much easier with this super chunky yarn. What I'm going to do is thread the darning needle with that tail end. There we go. And I'm going to slide this last stitch off the needle. There we go. And I'm just going to pass the darning needle through that last stitch and then pull it off and tighten to secure and that is us cast off one by one rib for the top of our tea cozy so it looks really cute and it's quite nice and stretchy with a really neat edge so you might be thinking well this doesn't look like a tea cozy it is very flat so now what we've got to do is repeat rows 1 to 26 and the cast off again to form the back of the tea cozy and then we're going to join them together. So let's get cracking with side two. Okay, so that's us got our two sides. Uh, so what we're going to do now is our little bit of sewing to join them together. And I promise it is minimal. So first of all, we need to line up the two wrong sides. So we've got all these bubbles facing each other. So the outside is the predominantly our knit stitch of our stocking stitch, okay? Now we've kept on our tail ends from our cast off and our cast on, and these are pretty crucial because we're gonna use these now to sew together. So we're gonna start off with the bottom brim where we've got our one by one rib and one of our tails from our cast on. We're gonna join this and we're gonna knit up the full six rows that were our one by one rib on this side. So we need to thread that tail end into our darning needle, like so. And we start off by joining the edges. Then we're gonna pick up a stitch on this purl side of our one by one. I'm going to put the needle in and just find that loop or the little bubble. Pass this needle through there. And we're going to do the same for this side. And the reason I'm doing it like this is because it will allow you to have an almost seamless attachment at the bottom. So we are almost at the end of our one by one rib. Last stitch. So we're going to go into that last bubble there before we start our stocking stitch and to the equivalent on this side. Then we're just going to pass the yarn back to the inside, pushing it back through. And that's our first join. And as you can see, it's pretty neat. Um, it's basically just an expansion of this inner part of our one by one rib, because it just looks like it's all pearl stitches. But we know it's not, it's our join. Then I'm going to go into the inside and we're just going to weave in the ends of that tail and try and go away from the opening because you don't want your weaved in edge poking out. I'm 
once you're happy with your weaving in, you can take off the darning needle and just snip that tail end off and discard. I'm going to join our edges back together. And now we're going to do the same at the top. So we're going to knit all the way down this bit of one by one ribbon that we've got for the top of the tea cozy using our cast off tail. So again, thread that through. Join the two tops. And then we're going to again open that up, ignore those first knit stitches, find that purl, pass the needle through, equivalent on this side, ignore the first, find the purl, pull that through and just continue like that till we get to the end of our rib at the top of the cosy. There we go, last bubble that through and now we're just going to pass the yarn back into the inside and turn inside out and again we're just going to weave in our ends and try and go away from the opening left quite a short tail here so it's not going to be the longest weaving you've ever seen and that'll do us, snip that off, put that aside. Okay, so we've now joined one side and as you can see, we've got the gap here. And so this is for the spout side because we went to the top of our ribbon at the bottom. So that's where the spout's gonna come out. I'm gonna turn it over and we're now gonna line it up and start again at the bottom with our cast on tail. And we're gonna join the bottom edge, this brim with our one by one rib but only up to the first four rows. So that's one, two, three, four, so there. Um, the reason for that is so that the handle fits in because the handle usually on a teapot comes down a bit lower. So again, we need to get our darning needle, thread that through. And we're gonna do the same technique as we did the other side. It's easy to get carried away, but then it makes it difficult to fit your tea cozy. So this is the last one. and then pass the yarn to the rear. And then we're gonna turn that inside out. Now, because you've joined both sides, it gets a bit harder to turn it inside out, but there we go. And we're just gonna weave this in now. And again, I'm, move, I'm trying to move my tail end away from what will be the opening. And that should do, well, maybe one more just for luck. There we go and cut off that tail. There we go, so we've joined both bottoms. Now, the top again. So again, for this one, we're gonna do all the way to the bottom of that nice brim, um, uh, to the top part of our one by one rib. So we're gonna, our darning needle again, join the edges, and find that purl stitch, there we go. Find the purl stitch. There we go. And last one, into that bubble. Back over that side. And then we're passing it back through. And then turn the other way about. There we go. And we're just gonna weave in these ends. Again, try and go away from the opening as much as you can. And cut off the tail. And now we've joined the tea cozy. We've got that cute little top. We've got the shaping that we've done with our nice decreases. It's giving it a nice shape. We've got our nice ribbon detail at the bottom. And we've got our bigger opening for the handle and our smaller opening for our spout. So we can now put it on our teapot 
and we've got our nice decreased detail. We've got our ribbon at the top, we've got the nice opening for our handle, the brim with our one by one rib, which looks really cute. Or we can jazz it up a little. So, as I mentioned, we can either leave the tea cozy plain, or we can zhuzh it up a bit with a nice pom pom, a crochet chain, a bit of a bow. So, as you can see with this one, I've done it in opposite colours. So this was the main colour for the one I've just done. This are contrast. So what I'm going to do is use this same yarn to do a pom-pom and a crochet chain to decorate our nice oceany blue tea cosy. So to begin, we're going to do the pom-pom first. We've got our contrasting yarn and we've got our pom-pom maker. Uh, the pom-pom makers are pretty cool. Uh, to find out where to get one from, have a look at the links below. Um, they make things a lot easier than using the traditional cardboard method. Uh, they come like this in a neat little package. Um, and then what you do is you open these arms up. Um, I kind of think of them as like rainbows. So we've got a, a bit of an arch here and we've got the equivalent on this side. So what we're going to do is pull two of these ar little arches or rainbows out. We're going to get our contrasting yarn and we are going to wrap the yarn around both of those arches like so. Uh, because this yarn is super chunky, it isn't going to take much to fill this up. So we're just going to work back and forth until we are happy that the arches are covered in yarn. So that'll do. And I find it useful if we leave our tail end of the yarn at the outer edge of the arch because then we fold it in to the centre and we've now got these next two arches to wrap around to make our circle. So we've not had to cut the yarn off, just pull it to the front to now wrap around these two arches. So round we go again, covering that up. Obviously if you're using thinner yarn, for the contrasting colour, you will need to wrap around a lot more. This is just nice and easy and quick. And then when we've finished and we're happy with the yarn we've wrapped around those second arches, we're going to fold them into the middle and we're going to cut the yarn off like so. Now what we're going to do is, you can see if you hold the pom-pom maker together, You've got a gap here and a gap here. And what we're gonna do is cut all the way along here and it'll open up the yarn. And then we'll turn it around and we'll do the same here. Cut right up the middle. And then we're going to use uh, a tail end of the yarn, a strand of yarn to then secure it. So we will start off by cutting these bits open. So into this gap here, we're just gonna cut along. Now, depending on the yarn and how tight you've wrapped it, that can be quite tough, but it's only a wee pom-pom. Now carefully make sure you hold everything together, turn it round, and do the same again for these arches. So through the middle, just cutting up that ridge. There we go. And now we're going to take a strand of the same colour yarn, and we're going to put it in that gap, and we're going to pull it pretty tight. So in the gap all the way around and pull tight. And then we're going to tie a knot to secure. There we go. And I'm going to do one more just so it holds all those strands in place. There we go. And now what we're going to do is open up these arches by pulling the little tabs. So ping them up and the second one and then turn it around and do the same up and then the second one. And then the white bit or the centre of the pom pom maker is held together with a pin. So what we're going to do is pull those two bits apart, so the two white ends. And there we have our pom pom maker in pieces and we just put that pin back together fold in the arches and that's our pom pom maker ready to go for the next time. So we're done with that now. And then we've got a cute little pom pom. Now as you can see it's looking a little bit ragged because I may have not been 
super neat. So we're just going to shape it with our scissors. Just trim little bits off, make it more spherical. Give it a little fluff up, a bit more trimming. Um, also, point to note, making pom-poms is very addictive. <laughs> Once you get the hang of it, you don't want to stop. So there's our little pom-pom. And we've kept on these two ends of that strand that we used to um, fasten it all together because we need them for the second part. So I'm going to put the pom-pom -pom to the side. And now we're going to do our crochet chain. So for the crochet chain, um, this a crochet chain sounds daunting, but I am by no means a crocheter, um, but even I can do a crochet chain. So we're going to start off with a slip knot like we would to knit. So take our contrasting yarn, put it over our two fingers, wrap it round, cross it over at the top, turn our fingers to face us. The back strand goes under the front, pull it through, and there's our slip knot there. Get the crochet hook and put it through and tighten it to secure. Now, the way that this is a bit different is I'm going to be holding the yarn in my left hand. So I've got a bit of a weird way of doing this because I lose my tension quite easy when crocheting. So I'm going to pick up the ball end and wrap it round my hand and then across my index finger like that. Then with my thumb and middle finger, I'm going to pinch the tail end from our slip knot. And now we're ready to chain. So what I'm going to do with the crochet hook is from the front, so have the crochet hook facing you, then scoop it round that strand of yarn, twist it, hook that yarn, pull it down, and we're going to slide it through our slip knot like so and we have just crocheted one j well a stitch um, and now we just repeat that so crochet hook comes towards me goes between my index finger and middle finger scoops up the yarn you spin it round to hook it and slide it through and just continue crochet chaining like so um you probably need this to be about 15 centimeters long so we're just gonna keep going because what we want to do is loosely sew it into the top of our tea cozy so as you can see i am no pro when it comes to this but i do find this incredibly satisfying you can also knit a chain um, but this is far far quicker and it's a bit of fun so now we've got our nice crochet chain that looks pretty sweet. Um, I think I've done it about 40 centimeters instead of 15. Um, but feel free to do it shorter if you want. Um, now what I'm going to do is cut off the ball end of the yarn, leaving just a wee tail. Get my darning needle. And we're going to thread that tail end through. And we're going to slide that last stitch off the crochet hook. Put that aside and pass the tail end of the yarn through that last stitch and pull it to secure. Now I'm going to keep this darning needle on this tail end because now what I'm going to do is thread this through the top of my tea cozy. Here's the tea cozy that we've knitted um, and we're about to jazz up a bit, a bit, a bit, a little. Um, and I'm going to start off, so I'm looking at the tea cozy now. Um, and I'm going to thread into the base of our one by one rib at the top. I'm going to go in to this first uh, stitch, like so. Pull it through. Now, because we're using really bulky yarn and we did quite a tight stitch, we're going to have to just nicely ease it through there to make sure that we can continue threading this round. So I'm just going to change angles slightly. So I'm just going to tease that through. There we go. And then I'm going to let it come out for the purl stitch and go back in at the base of the rib knit stitch again. So again, tease it through. 
spin the tea cozy round back out for the pearl in for the knit uh, and now I'm going to go into this last knit stitch at the base and we're got and we're back to where we first thread this through. So depending on how tight you pull this is how much of the contrast and colour you're going to see. So you can see what two ends. Now you can either just leave them as is or you can tie them in a little bow. Um, I'll let you decide what you want to do. Um, you might want to make it even bigger so that you've got more of a, a cable, uh, a crochet chain left. I'm going to leave mine like that for now. And I'm going to leave these tail ends for now as well. So now what we're going to do is attach our pom-pom. So take your darn needle and we're going to thread the two tails of the pom-pom through we left attached. Uh, this will take a bit of convincing because of how chunky the super chunky yarn is. There we go. Both tail ends through. Now I'm going to take that and find where I want to attach it to the tea cozy. I think we'll go for in here. So I'm going to pick up the blue stitch and pass the darning needle underneath. And then pull the two tail ends through. I'm now going to take the darning needle off. And with the two tails from our pom pom, I'm going to tie two knots. One, two, and then I'm going to cut off the tails of the pom poms. Be careful not to cut the crochet chain. So there we have our super chunky, quick and simple uh, tea cozy with our contrast in decoration, a little pom-pom and our crochet chain. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon so you'll get a notification when we post our next video. If you'd like the pattern in written form, then click the link below. Um, thank you very much for watching and happy knitting.